Let's move on to the next uh, segment, and this is an open meeting. I'd like to welcome Mr. Lam uh, to join us, and also um, colleagues uh, from the police. We have two new faces, and um, an old face uh, leaving us, um, posted to be posted to a new uh, endeavor. Um, Mr. Kwok, um, Chief. Uh, superintendent, uh, he is going to be promoted as um, anti North uh, commander. My thanks to um, to you for your cooperation and your hard work over the past couple of years, and I hope that um, you will be uh, scaling new heights uh, in your new endeavour. Chairman, thank you very much uh, for uh, your guidance um, over the past two years and a half uh, for CAPO. I have accomplished um, part of uh, the mission. I hope that what I've learned here uh, from members and chairmen uh, will be applied uh, to my new endeavor. Let's hope that um, the COVID uh, will be brought under control. I'll be inviting chairmen and members uh, to the NT North uh, for some exchanges and get to know um, my colleagues and give us some uh, guidance and advice and your words of wisdom. Let's welcome um, Chief Superintendent Mr. Mack. And we have um, Chief Superintendent Ao Young um, to um, the new post. We also have Assistant Commissioner uh, Madam Zhang Eda. Welcome. I have received apologies from a number of members, and Mr. J and Mr. Ho Kam Wing and Mr. Lam S.C. Saline and Madam Ho. They've sent in their apologies. Let's get started with um, our agenda items. Uh, the first one is um, the confirmation of minutes. Of the last meeting, uh, the minutes have been circulated to members. The, the secretary has received no proposed amendments. Uh, do I hear any amendments now? If not, I will take the minutes as read. Item two. As per usual practice, we've been inviting the police um, to select um, a topic uh, for some briefing. Uh, today's topic is um, the digital video recording devices of the Hong Kong police. I hand you over to the uh, police colleagues. Chairman members, the police um, have been um, rising to the policing challenges over the years. We have been resorting to uh, IT to enhance our abilities. We've been using um, the uh, digital video devices back in uh, 2013. We have introduced um, the uh, body worn um, video camera. Uh, these uh, cameras will enhance um, the um, collection of evidence and also uh, to uh, counter the, the uh, confrontation and to counter any false allegation. We have um, introduced um, the um, digital action camera uh, for our officers to deal with um, their day-to-day uh, -day work. We have invited um, Mr. Yu, um, Mr. Stephen Yu, Senior Superintendent, Mr. Terry Fang, uh, Superintendent, from the Support Wing and Operations Wing, uh, respectively, uh, to talk to us about the digital video recording devices of the HKP. Good afternoon, Chairman. and. Members of the committee, uh, my thanks to you all for the opportunity to brief members on the digital video recording devices. I am Stephen Yu, Senior Superintendent of the Support Wing, and next to me is Terry Fang, uh, Superintendent Operations Wing. We will cover uh, the background information about the um, video recording devices. And then uh, we'll be talking more about the uh, body worn video camera and furnish members with more information. 
in September 2017 at the joint meeting, uh, we said that back in 06, uh, the government started, uh, the police uh, started using the um, video cameras in our day to day work. On the front line, uh, we do have the opportunity to use these um, devices when we're dealing with um, breach of peace uh, incidents uh, like um, violent um, scenes. When we deal with uh, confrontational situations, um, we hope that uh, we can uh, de escalate um, the situation with the introduction of um, the, the video cameras. We can um, de escalate the confrontation. And we can also help the frontline uh, staff to collect evidence for prosecution. This would enhance um, the precision and our ability to uh, instigate prosecution. And this would also instill confidence in the police. We have uh, been rece receiving positive feedback in the use of these devices. And we can, as I said, de escalate confrontational situation. And uh, we can um, gather evidence, and we can also increase um, the transparency. When we use um, the devices, we have to abide by the overriding principles. First, um, the uh, video um, capturing will be incident specific. We will cover um, all the involves uh, in the entire incidents. And in some cases, uh, there will be no recording, uh, like uh, intimate searches, materials involving legal professional privilege. Also, when we keep um, the video footages, we have to observe the security measures to safeguard the personal data. Our uh, data card um, will be sealed um, to make sure that they will not be tampered with, and the data uh, will also be encrypted to guard against uh, any uh, intentional um, alteration of the data. We will keep um, the data for 31 days uh, with no um, evidential uh, value. And the 31 day retention period uh, will ensure uh, that we will maintain our efficiency and also we will uh, maintain the personal data privacy. I will take uh, members through uh, the body worn video camera, and Mr. Fang uh, will be um, introducing the details regarding the um, action um, camera. In March um, 2013, uh, we've started um, the body worn uh, video camera. Uh, they're small and they are effective, and this will enhance our ability to gather evidence and, and the precision, and this will enhance uh, the police ability to enforce the law. We've taken into account um, the overseas uh, jurisdictions, state of UK, Australia, and Singapore experience, and all these uh, experiences show that um, the body one camera uh, will achieve uh, good effectiveness. We've conducted field test. Uh, we've also introduced um, the second generation uh, camera, video camera, without um, the use of um, memory cards. And the frontline staff will be maintaining uh, two-way communications with us. And our colleagues are in support of um, this, um, the use of video uh, camera, because uh, we can capture everything that, that happened with uh, precision and accuracy. And that would enhance the police's uh, prosecutorial uh, work. Over the past uh, five years, 80% of um, the cases, we managed to de-escalate the confrontation, and the effectiveness is plain uh, for all to see. We have well, well over 10,000 uh, BWVCs uh, for the uh, uniformed uh, colleagues. The technology has been um, de developing by leaps and bounds, and this has achieved uh, pretty good results for us. And we have to procure um, the more sophisticated devices on a regular basis. 
In overseas jurisdictions, um, the devices that they use uh, do not need any memory cards, and the footages will be uh, sent uh, to the computers uh, for uh, storage. For storage, and in June uh, 26, 2018, we have introduced the second generation device that doesn't use a memory card, and we have um, bigger light, um, bigger. Um, uh, battery life, and we can also save um, the the uh, processing time, and the administrative procedures can be reduced, and and colleagues can return to the post um, to take enforcement action. Here we have um, the night vision, ultra low light um, device. By comparison with mobile phones, there is um, a marked um, difference there. The one above is uh, made by a mobile phone. The, the, the one below is um, by a BWVC. And when the light is out, the mobile phone cannot capture a thing, but the BWVC can still capture uh, the colored images. During night time, in ultra low light uh, situation, we can capture everything with um, good clarity. This would, good, would be good for the collection of evidence, and this will also be good in a confrontational situation. In order to move on with um, the IT era, we will pursue new models to make sure that we can provide uh, the best quality service. So we have been identifying the, the relevant technology for inclusion. Hi. Resolution low light and stabilizer would be the uh, new features um, that will support uh, the policing work and enhance our evidential uh, the, the um, collection of um, evidence and to embrace all the policing work in the IT era. Uh, Terry. Now uh, we have ter uh, Terry's uh, briefing. Members and chair. I uh, will give a briefing on the, the latest and newest uh, facilities for the operational wing. And uh, this is the digital camera cord, camcorder. In the big uh, public ordered events, I think that this is not a new device for us to do that. Uh, since 2006, in the POEs, we will uh, equip uh, our colleagues uh, with uh, mobile uh, the digital the camcorders. And um, according to the, 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 the risk level of the P POEs and then other anticipation of evidence collection, etc., we will uh, ask our colleagues uh, to carry uh, this camcorder with them. Uh, uniformed officers and also the crime officers will carry it with them or this uh, camcorder so that, that they can capture high definition and stabilize video footages for the prosecution if needed. You can see that in this picture that uh, we will uh, position uh, it in a stand and then to take the footage in a higher position so that uh, we can capture the high definition the footages and also the, the process of uh, the event. Since June 2019, uh, with a series of uh, social unrest, and uh, confrontational the, uh, situations, the whole the, uh, society was facing serious challenges, in particular in uh, big uh, public order events and in the situations where it's, uh, confrontations, there is uh, a need for us uh, to equip our colleagues uh, with uh, advanced and more uh, effective uh, uh, facilities. So that uh, since November, uh, that uh, we have uh, added this new equipment to our uh, frontline uh, of uh, colleagues. We hope that, that it will enhance the transparency of the enforcement and, and also in situation of uh, malicious and false allegations, we can uh, make use of these footages to protect uh, our colleagues and also the force. 
And on the other hand, because uh, we can take the well, footages from different angles uh, with high quality, high resolutions, so uh, if there is needed, in case that we need to, to provide evidence, so that the, the whole the situation will be much improved. As we all know, the digital action camera uh, will uh, be installed in the hamlet of our right police. This is not unique in Hong Kong. In various countries, uh, the police force is also equipped with uh, such devices, including Thailand, uh, USA, UK, Australia, etc. And then uh, to put it on the hamlet, uh, enables uh, our colleagues uh, to uh, follow uh, the eyesight of our colleagues and then uh, so that uh, high definition stabilized and unobstructed footages could be captured. If uh, you know a little bit about uh, this uh, digital action camera, uh, for instance, uh, when you are uh, well, uh, doing some sports, you will know that uh, they uh, are very good uh, in the resolution. They have a 4K revolution, and this is four times of high uh, HD. And uh, I will show you a video to see how uh, good it is. And then uh, they also have internal stabilizer and waterproof and also shock proof. So in the confrontational situation, if uh, it is needed, it is a very good devices uh, to be deployed. And how or when will we uh, use this, uh, the digital action camera? Of course, firstly, we will uh, do a risk uh, assessment and uh, deployment will be based on the threat assessment. Uh, when there is a, uh, a problem in the public order and when our colleagues are about, uh, th thought that it will be good to make use of uh, this camera to uh, take good footages for evidence uh, in case that there is uh, allegations and then uh, the court is being called upon. And you can be rest assured that in uh, drafting this policy, we have a very strict guidelines in doing so, so that uh, we know when uh, these uh, cameras will be used and also how to uh, uh, keep uh, the, the footages and the procedure in uh, delivering to the court for evidence. As we just mentioned, uh, they are uh, being tested in November this year. You can see that in the hamlets of our anti right police that uh, the hamlets is equipped and installed with this uh, camera. There are two demonstrations of DAC footages, and in the first footage, and uh, each of these footage of four uh, different segments, and then uh, in each of these segments, you can see that uh, uh, all of uh, our colleagues are equipped with uh, this camera, and then they showed uh, the footage being captured in the different directions. One is being taken in the the public with uh, daylight, and then the, the second is uh, in the situations when there is confrontation and then there is uh, really chasing after uh, the suspects, etc. Uh, the second footage is uh, a mock a situation uh, uh, well, like that uh, we are uh, actually trying to uh, arrest a suspect, and there are the people who try to, uh, to snatch that away from us. So you can see that uh, the, well, when people are coming out from different directions, if uh, our colleagues is uh, equipped with this camera, they can uh, take uh, uh, footages uh, from the four different directions.
We hope that these new devices uh, could help our frontline uh, colleagues uh, to enhance, of course, the, the uh, transparency of enforcement. And the second is uh, about uh, malicious and uh, false allegation. And the third is in cases of confrontational uh, situation that uh, we can make use of these footages uh, for evidence collection. And uh, of course, we hope that uh, it will not be used so frequently and, and uh, it will only uh, be used in the really uh, the very difficult situation and also in the big uh, POE uh, with confrontations, etc. Is there any questions for the two officers? So the vice chair and then so the two vice. Okay, thank you, Chair. The two technical questions. First one about uh, the body worn camera. Uh, in the case there is low light, that you would uh, automatically uh, uh, turn to the low light mode, right? You don't need to do it manually. The second uh, is about uh, in action. Now that that this is being installed on the Hamlet, and that this is very tight enough so that it will not uh, actually uh, well fall off from that uh, Hamlet, and then will it uh, be too uncomfortable for the the officer if it's too tight? And the second is that uh, well, uh, since 2013, uh, they already start using it, the body one one. But until today, it's not fully equipped. I mean, the, the whole force is not fully equipped. And in fact, I've uh, already asked this question in a security panel. And the answer is that that, that, that would be done uh, in two years' time. Uh, now that uh, you have uh, 10,000 uh, camera, but uh, we have a force of uh, 30,000. So it might take a long time. Is that because of the lack of uh, resources? And uh, and it might affect actually our action, right? IPCC uh, might receive less uh, complaints. <laughs> and then, So I would like to hear uh, uh, the opinion of Kapo. We have already actually talked about uh, that issue of insulting police uh, being a crime. And uh, if uh, this uh, can go hand in hand with the body worn camera, will it uh, uh, decrease uh, the allegations against police and then really unnecessary allegations? And uh, can you uh, speed up? actually the action uh, with the security bureau. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Mr. Lam, would you like to take the question? Just now, there are a few issues being raised. That, uh, Stephen might uh, add on to that about the two technical issues. Uh, relating to the body borne the camera, it is automatic. So once it's on, then uh, depending on the situation, they will uh, adjust uh, their mode of operation. And the, the action camera, and uh, it uh, only it's only launched this year. So it's, it's just an external kind of installation. It will not affect uh, the Hamlet. Uh, nor, uh, not its uh, uh, level of comfort, uh, nor its design. Just now, Frankie uh, said that uh, in 2017, at that time, uh, IPCC suggested to us uh, that we need to expand that. Uh, and and uh, because of your support and, and, and also the security panel's uh, suggestion, you can see that in the report, uh, the body warned the camera already exceed the number of uh, the 10,000. That means that uh, or, or despite that we have a 30,000 uh, uh, strong uh, force, but uh, since they are actually the world servicing in shift, they are, and also that the cameras are only the deployed with uniform officers, we have already speed up. And uh, well, now uh, we already uh, uh, complete uh, the mission that uh, all uniformed uh, officers will uh, carry uh, the body-worn camera. So this uh, already uh, will uh, achieve our the pledge. 
and about uh, the inside the police regulation. We are open to that suggestion. And uh, this offense, whether uh, it will help us, uh, I think that we still need the consensus in the society. And we and then we will actually do work uh, correspondingly. So anyway, we are open to that. I, I, I think that uh, with uh, the digital device, I think that it's very useful for frontline officers. It not only it, uh, well record uh, crimes and, and also help uh, in the prosecution, providing evidence. And uh, it will uh, well enhance uh, impartiality and also that, uh, to en ensure that we will uh, receive allegations uh, with proof. And uh, my question is whether that uh, this uh, the camera will only be uh, deployed in the big POEs uh, for uh, the minor uh, offenses like uh, a world uh, uh, assault and then the things, etc. Would you also uh, use uh, this camera? And uh, the second question is that the public is also concerned. Uh, about uh, uh, the, the footage in relation to personal data or privacy. Uh, when will the police uh, use uh, these cameras? Uh, is it necessary that we need to uh, give uh, notification and telling the public that we are going to start shooting? Do we need to do that? Um, and then to give a uh, warning before they start uh, the recording. This is um, a question of a technical nature. I hand you over to Stephen. The question was, under what circumstances can we uh, use um, the recording device or the P uh, BWVC? As we said, uh, we can use this um, in a confrontational um, scenario, like in a violent uh, scene. Like the Vice Chairman said, in a drunken brawl, uh, for instance, or simply in a kind of dispute, if people on the scene are really agitated and we see the need to um, de-escalate de the, the uh, situation and gather evidence, and there is also a likelihood of a breach of peace, and then we can activate um, this device. So when um, our colleagues are on the scene, they will observe um, the, the situation there, and they will activate um, the, the um, BWVC accordingly. Do you have to uh, make it known to the other party that the device is being activated? Right, this is the second question. Uh, first of all, our camera is um, different from other cameras. We have um, the front-facing screen. As, as long as uh, it's turned on, uh, people can see uh, the screen and that is turned on to answer your question. As far as uh, possible, we would uh, give a notification uh, to to the person concerned that uh, we are look we are activating the the camera, and we're asking people to to stay calm and, and tell tell them that um, every move that they make uh, will be captured. And where possible, uh, we will uh, make the announcement, um, or in some cases we would turn it on and we would advise um, the the people on the scene accordingly. You must have the uh, set of guidelines, uh, don't you? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, perhaps uh, you might wish um, to, to make available the guidelines uh, for our reference. Yes. Paul? My question was touched on uh, by um, the chairman and vice chairman. I think uh, for the BWVC and the DAC, it depends on uh, when it is uh, uh, turned on and when it is um, turned off. And it is a matter of exercising the discretion. And you are facing a situation that might um, be volatile, and you might need to, to resort to this device. 
So for the frontline uh, colleagues, under what circumstances uh, should they turn on the device? Do they have any guidelines to, to facilitate their decision? Otherwise, it will be just a matter of discretion or subjective judgment on the part of um, the, the colleagues. We may not be able to achieve the intended uh, objective. How can you make sure that uh, there would be some consistency uh, in the, the activation of um, the, the body one video camera? I hand you over to Stephen. Thank you very much for the question. When we formulated the policy, the most important thing is we do uh, offer rigorous training um, to the staff. And we emphasize the fact that the purpose of um, the, the camera is first um, to help them gather evidence. We will not wait until after the act has uh, been committed before they will turn on the device. If in their judgment uh, there is a likelihood of um, unlawful activities and there is a likelihood of a breach of peace, uh, then they would activate the camera in order to capture um, what, what happened. In our training, uh, we made this very, very clear. In our policy, we also uh, made it clear to our colleagues, uh, what purposes of um, the device is, and we hope that they will capture the scene. If um, we capture the scene after um, the um, unlawful acts have uh, happened, then the whole um, purpose of um, procuring um, the device and delivering the training uh, will be wasted. So um, I hope the members will understand under what same circumstances they will turn on the device. Over the past five years, on different occasions, uh, we, do, we did have uh, two-way communication as to uh, whether the, the BWFEC helped the work. The answer is definitely yes. Follow-up? Chairman, if I may, uh, very simple. I've seen so many complaint um, cases, the stop and search um, cases, and the one uh, who is being searched uh, may be uh, very calm. And after stop and search, uh, people um, complain about uh, rudeness and impoliteness, and all these uh, complaints uh, would, would arise. If uh, you turn on the, the camera, uh, then if people come forward and lodge a complaint, you have the evidence. Of course, uh, there is um, the, the privacy element because you are searching things um, that belong to, to the people. As I said, if there is no need for us to activate the, the um, recording device, um, our colleagues um, will not do so. So it depends on the situation. If you see the, the, the um, Lead um, to gather evidence. If we uh, want to uh, turn on the device to, to keep control of the situation, we will do so. Clement, Antonio, and Edgar. Chairman, thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Stephen Yu. You mentioned in your presentation that um, the uh, footage uh, will be kept for 31 days. Now, if the video footage becomes um, part of the evidence, that the, the footage uh, will be transmitted uh, from the camera to the server uh, for storage. It would be different from um, the physical evidence is there any particular difference in the way you treat the physical evidence and the um, the video footage um, that, that you gather? I think this, that there would be some implications uh, on, on privacy. Thank you very much for your question. Let me reiterate that in using the uh, video camera, and also, in dealing with um, the video footages, we do have to abide by very rigorous um, set of guidelines. As I said, how do we deal with um, the video footages and evidence? We do have um, the 
guidelines that we have um, secured, uh, as not um, the DOJ advice. When we uh, store the store the evidence, uh, there has to be an element of integrity. Otherwise, um, it will compromise um, the, the evidence and when we present um, the evidence in court. Second, when we uh, capture the images with um, the BWVC or, or the DAC, for that matter, we will um, keep them in our record. We don't just uh, put them in the server. We have another medium uh, for us to do so. I can go into greater detail if um, possible later on. But we do have to observe a whole set of um, procedures. We, we did have um, cases in the past um, that we adduced some this kind of evidence. And the court uh, did consider these kind of evidence admissible. So members can rest assured since 2013, uh, to today, it has proved that um, the evidence that will be invisible in court. When you keep um, the the footage, uh, you, you may put this in the iCloud or whatever. Is this under the jurisdiction of um, the police, or are you are you storing this uh, in in um, a service providers? Well, we keep um, the the evidence um, in. Uh, in a CD, um, we will not put it in, in the cloud. We will not put it in the server. We keep it in a CD or DVD. Tony, regarding the uh, video recording, uh, Capo has um, given us the explanation. I think we we um, we all agree uh, that this would um, deliver positive results. And this will be good for everybody all around. Now, for the uh, BWVC, you will um, store the record in the server. I'd like to uh, clarify this. Now, I'm not talking about the body worn uh, video camera here. Um, what about the, uh, the digital action camera? Do you have any record of um, the, the cameras being turned on? When you gather evidence, and you may have different perspectives, do you know whether a camera is turned on, or do you have to rely on, on the officers to report to you about the activation? Uh, let's take an example. Um, the Generation 2 uh, BWVC, when the images are captured, we will have a record who has seen, who has seen it, uh, with what device we do have um, the the uh, code access uh, system, so we do have a very rigorous um, system to guard against any unauthorized access uh, to the footages uh, for tampering uh, or for uh, erasure. Now, for uh, POE or large uh, scale operations, some may have turned on turned on the device, as others have not, because it's down to their own judgment. You may have some uh, cameras that are on, some are off, and after the operation, you must um, reveal uh, all the materials that, that, that are recorded. Now, what I'm trying to find out is um, you may ignore or disregard um, the evidence and that, that is uh, not in your favor, and you would just adduce the evidence uh, that, that is in your favor. How do people know that um, the, the operation is fair and just? Right. The colleagues cannot delete um, the, the footage. If a police officer, like um, what you said, if I've um, captured an image and I want to delete it, um, you can't do it. You simply can't do it. Now, if um, they don't notify us after using it, the next person using it uh, will know um, the the images. We have um, all the all the record um, on who carried um, the camera beforehand. We do have all the evidence there, uh, so uh, people cannot keep quiet about it. We do have all the record, uh, which is duly recorded, and we can um, all the trail uh, who carried and used the camera. You have GPS there, don't you, in the um, device?
Well, this is um, an operational detail, and I, I'm afraid I cannot um, divulge um, the details here. Tell me any further question, Edgar? I've got a technical question here. You mentioned the Gen 2 camera, and the battery life uh, can last for 12 hours, and you can um, capture in ultra low light. But you didn't seem to mention the, the resolution there. Second, I'm not sure whether you use um, the, the video footage as uh, the main evidence or supplementary. If you use it as um, main evidence, will there be any complaint? Uh, from the um, defense, that uh, some of the evidence that might have been doctored. How can you guard against the possibility that um, you'll be ac accused of um, doctoring the, the images and uh, frame the defendants? Right, first of all, uh, let me uh, address the resolution. Um, the BWVC is 1080, it is not 4K like the DAC is done by uh, TV at home, it is sufficiently clear. The chairman and members, uh, you saw in the uh, ultra low light situation, the uh, the video, the uh, the cell phone could couldn't capture the thing, but the BWVC could still capture what happened um, on the scene in colours. So we could uh, capture clearly uh, all the uh, images and and what happened on the scene. Second, you mentioned the the. Um, Evidence. When we deal with um, the situation on the scene, we, we will not simply rely on the um, video footage as the only evidence. We are going to give um, evidence, and on the scene, we will try our very best uh, to make sure that um, there would be other witnesses who will come forward um, to, to testify. We hope that with uh, all these um, evidence, we will be able to deal with the case in a fair and, and, and impartial manner. Okay. Thank you, Herman. Your turn. Thank you. A very simple question. Just now, some members suggest that uh, maybe there are people who suspect that uh, the camera is on, and then uh, they will just uh, well delete uh, some uh, footages that's uh, not favorable to the police, and just keep those who are favorable. Uh, thank you for your explanation that uh, actually the police officers cannot do that. And uh, well, my question is, despite that they could not do it, but is, this, is there a way that uh, they can uh, review what the footages are? Well, uh, if I could not uh, review what I have recorded, how could I uh, clarify whether that I have doctored the, the footages or not? And uh, so you said that I could not erase any segments. But uh, if I'm a frontline officer, can I review the footages recorded? Thank you for your question. First of all, the, we call them operating officer. Uh, the uh, operator the needs to have a consent uh, from his uh, supervisor and then in company of the supervisor so that they can review the footage. Why? Why do we need that? Uh, well, uh, my experience that I have been a uh, commander in operation, and there is a case that uh, there's a stop and search. And then uh, uh, the concerned body becomes quite agitated. So we uh, turn on the camera and then uh, record uh, his uh, uh, actions and his uh, situation. And then later on, and uh, this uh, concerned party uh, fleed. And uh, well, other than uh, chasing him, and then uh, we also to look at uh, the uh, footages and to see uh, how he looked and also the, his uh, uh, tears, etc. So that, uh, well, because that uh, recording can give us more information, and then it help us actually to, to uh, successfully uh, capture uh, the concerned party. 
And so, in cases that there is situation needed, and then, uh, well, the not on the just personal discretion, and we have very uh, straight guidelines. Well, to tell uh, when and how uh, that review could be done. Any other questions? Okay, uh, the professors and the Melissa. Thank you, Chair. I still remember that about two years ago, uh, the police already uh, well, they introduced uh, these cameras. At that time, the questions like uh, the uh, effectiveness of uh, uh, quelling uh, well, uh, agitation, uh, uh, Etc. And then uh, I, th I still remember that uh, you said that about 89 percent uh, is successful. And now, uh, well, do you have uh, more cases? Do you have uh, more concrete uh, figures uh, to show us its effectiveness? The second question is, and uh, you said that uh, the footages will be stored for 30 days. Uh, have you ever identified that there are uh, well, footages uh, that uh, will be uh, having a higher potential in uh, well, dealing with uh, queries uh, that goes to CAPO? Okay, Manisa, maybe I will respond to the second question first. So uh, uh, whether that is uh, the B, uh, WDC or DAC, whether that uh, they are the for complaints or crime uh, actions, that uh, if uh, uh, they uh, are footages that are in the con uh, relation, that we will cap them for th uh, 30 days, of course. And then uh, there are follow-up cases that uh, we will inform the concerned uh, our commanders so that uh, these footages will be capped further and then uh, they will not be erased. So 30 days is a normal situation. But in cases there are related cases, they will be kept longer. So for professors in the, po in the past five years, in general, the, there are about 80% effectiveness. Uh, well, it is uh, quite similar to our report in September 2017. I uh, fully understand the, the advantage of uh, the DAC, etc. But uh, my question is, in the future, uh, I think that this is uh, a technologic, uh, technological war. And uh, will there be a crisis? Uh, that uh, that uh, the uh, producer will not uh, sell you uh, those technology, and then uh, you need uh, to tender the parts, and then and then uh, oh, well, uh, how about the, the compatibility? Is that uh, the uh, you can only uh, you will be facing sanctions, things like that, and then there are actually restrictions and then uh, uh, problems in updating it. So thank you. I didn't, uh, well, I hope that uh, you should have trust in us. First of all, uh, well, as I just mentioned, that uh, we will uh, uh, all the time keep an eye on the latest technology possible uh, to improve uh, the quality and effectiveness of our recording and, and also to enhance our professionalism in the force and, and, and law enforcement uh, on top of uh, providing the best service to the public. Uh, in the evidence collection, uh, up to now, we uh, have not encountered any difficulties. Uh, we uh, have uh, well, been uh, uh, buying from different uh, places. Uh, we are not uh, uh, not just buying from places that uh, has all this technology, but we are also just seeing uh, how the compatible they are and, and how best they fit into our the needs. Okay, uh, Mr. Yu, uh, I think that uh, we are quite uh, aligned in this, uh, that uh, DAC and BWDC uh, will be effective in reducing complaints, etc. And uh, some members had mentioned that in situations like uh, stop and search or the search, uh, house search, Uh, we would uh, turn it as a normal practice uh, that you will uh, turn on uh, the camera once uh, this kind of operation is being done. We think it's better that uh, you uh, well, take it uh, more stringent and then uh, you will 
also encourage uh, people, uh, your the colleagues, to do it. In all circumstances, uh, instead of uh, uh, that, uh, you require them uh, to report every time. So this become a norm, and. Uh, so far as I understand that that you, you will make it simple and you just uh, well like uh, that every time you do like uh, stop and search and then uh, you will just start recording. I think that uh, in general there is uh, actually uh, give it, uh, delivering tickets and then uh, stop and search and how search etc. So can we just make it uh, a normal practice that uh, once the operation has started you will turn on the, the recording. And I think that uh, well uh, since that you have a battery life, uh, it's already improved. And then the, the second is uh, the memory card. Uh, some um, a battery to, for the second generation lasts for 12 uh, hours. And now that uh, there's no need for the memory card, so that we have already solved that the technical issue. So can we expand and or extend uh, the practice? so that uh, we can actually help in the complaint uh, prevention. Thank you. Thank you, the Secretary General. And also thank you, members, uh, opinion and suggestions. I think that this is a policy issue. So uh, as uh, last time, the 2017, that uh, you suggest us to buy more. Now you see that, uh, uh, that the quantity is uh, much uh, higher than last time. And then they have been used, uh, deployed in everyday uh, well, uh, work. And of course, we need to take it into consideration on the policy level. And I would like to add that uh, our frontline colleagues understand very well that, as uh, uh, Superintendent, you said that uh, our frontline uh, colleagues' feedback uh, are very positive, have been very positive. And in many circumstances, uh, they are very, they are proactively uh, start recording uh, when the, uh, conflicts are, are anticipated. I, uh, there is an example uh, uh, in uh, the, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, not wearing a face mask uh, is illegal, and uh, the police is uh, the force and laws, uh, uh, law enforcement uh, department. And in uh, many situations, and uh, we see that uh, there are the people who are, are still not. Uh, abide by this law. And then uh, now that uh, the fine uh, is higher, then uh, well, of course that there might be more the, well, the disputes and complaints about it if uh, we uh, try to enforce the law, seeing that some people are not wearing uh, face masks. And so I think that uh, well, in those circumstances, uh, we might need to use more of those footage, uh, the recording. So anyway, uh, thank you for your suggestion. And then we will take all your the suggestions and opinions uh, for our policy uh, consideration. So in short, as you see that, uh, we think that uh, this is uh, very positive. And uh, uh, I don't think that there is any discrepancy uh, with your frontline uh, colleagues. As long as uh, evidence collection is concerned, as you just mentioned, rightly mentioned, that I think that this is a policy issue. First of all, uh, you need actually to see that uh, it is complied to the requirement of law. And uh, on the other hand, you need actually to observe privacy and data privacy as well. And according to our privacy law, then, then uh, we have a special provision on the personal data. As I mentioned, uh, that we need actually to strike a balance uh, between the law enforcement and protection of personal data. And uh, we, of course, that we are being exempt uh, in the, that uh, provision uh, once we are the force uh, on the, in the process of uh, force enforcement. But I think that we still need to observe the balance. And uh, well, maybe uh, that, uh, well, uh, when the, the, the frontline officer uh, needs to turn on the uh, cam, camcorder, they also need to uh, have the consideration of uh, data protection. 
And secondly, about uh, the evidence collection. Uh, I think that the, the process uh, between uh, the recordings being taken to, uh, to uh, that evidence is being presented in the court is very important. You need to actually protect all this data, otherwise that uh, uh, those uh, data will not be of use if they are tempered in the process. Now that uh, well, uh, there are cameras uh, with uh, that uh, colleagues, and and uh, on top of uh, this uh, ca uh, camcorders, uh, there are also other uh, more professional cameras, and uh, in action. So you actually need to uh, consider. Uh, and also, they need to uh, well to discuss uh, with uh, the prosecution and, and how to uh, collect uh, evidence uh, to the best of quality and then effectiveness. Well, sometimes the prosecutor might collect uh, everything that you have collected. You need to uh, give them all the evidence you've collected. You need actually use it uh, wisely and in the best manner possible. On the other hand, you need also to consider how to, to improve and optimize the use of this device. You might need to, to discuss uh, with uh, our commissioner of uh, privacy uh, to uh, see how this could be done best. And then very often, this is a matter of uh, psychology. So maybe a uh, psychologist could participate in the discussion. When uh, the camera should uh, be on, when it should be off, and then uh, how th that will uh, produce the best of effect. I think that uh, the clinical psychology will have some opinion on it. Lastly, maybe that uh, you can uh, give us some guidelines so that we can follow up this issue. But, this is all very positive. I would like to make the best of it. So shall we bring this item to a close? Yes, please, please. Chairman, thank you. So there are 52 uh, recommendations, and the police uh, will be bringing us up to date on the progress, and there is a report um, to the chief executive. In fact, the members of the public are, are really anxious to find out about the progress. Have we uh, considered um, disseminating the information to the members of the public? Uh, this uh, would be a conducive to better relationship between the public and the police. I think this is something that is worth uh, considering, uh, perhaps. Uh, Rebecca and the uh, Secretary General might wish to uh, consider how best we can do this uh, next year. We should uh, take an opportunity that you've done so much work and um, you have um, got so many findings, perhaps something can be done. Chairman, thank you very much uh, for the uh, summary regarding this item. We go along with uh, what you said, Chairman. Uh, not only uh, does it enhance our policing uh, effectiveness, uh, we we would also uh, be able to to uh, maintain uh, the the rights of the public. We have taken reference uh, from the advice of the uh, Privacy Commissioner. Like everything in life, uh, there is room for improvement. And each and every uniformed um, officer will be fitted with um, a, a BWA, BWVC. We've heard of what members had to say um, a few moments ago. Uh, we will try to identify areas for improvement. Thank you, Chairman. All right, let's move on to the next item. And we have um, the uh, complaint statistics uh, from CAPO that this is the usual practice. Uh, can we have um, a briefing here? Uh, Chairman, if I may.
let's wait a bit. And then um, the FOO related complaints. Let me start uh, now. Uh, for the first 11 months in 2020, we have received uh, 1,055 um, reportable complaints. 140 have to do with FOO events compared with 2019. Uh, compared with uh, 1,548, uh, it's down by 31.8%. Uh, and for the first 11 months, there are 501 cases. Uh, they're dealt with uh, by EDM compared with uh, 577 uh, in the previous year, that down by uh, 56 cases uh, or 30%. Um, Let's move on to the next one. For the first 11 months of um, the 1,555 cases, uh, for the minor cases, uh, they take up the majority, and that is um, the ones uh, circled in red. Um, uh, like uh, misconduct in politeness and neglect of duty, 82%. Uh, uh, the others are serious allegations, assault, um, threat, unnecessary use of authority and fabrication of evidence, 187 cases, 17.7%. For minor complaints, uh, the light green, um, 490 cases of four. 26% um, unless um, that, that is neglect of duty and 34% are for the next one. Light blue, um, the offensive language, 1.7%, 18 cases for the first 11 months, 886 cases of minor complaints, uh, down by 400 cases compared with uh, 1,200 uh, last year. Um, down by 30 percent. The grey one, assault, 129 cases. The dark blue, uh, threat, 10 cases, uh, 0.9 percent. Light purple, uh, unnecessary use of authority, 40 cases, 3.8 percent. Pink, fabrication of evidence, 7 or 0.7 percent. Other cases, 1 0.1 percent. For the first 11 months, uh, for the 187 serious cases, last year, uh, 250 cases, down by 65 or 25 percent. Down. The last one, I'm trying to make a comparison uh, between uh, 2020 and 2019. Neglect of duty. 728 down to 491 this year, uh, down by 230 cases. Misconduct in, in Polonis, 538 down to um, 359, down by 179 or 33%. Offensive language, 30 uh, down to 18, down by 12 or 40%. Assault, serious allegation, 165 cases down to 129, down by 36 or 21 percent. Threat, 16, down to 10, down by 6 or 37 percent. Unnecessary of use of authority, 58 down to 40, down by 18 or 31 percent. Fabrication of evidence, from 12 to 7, down by 5 or 41 uh, percent. To summarize, in 2020, first 11 months, total number of complaints, 1,500, down by five, 493 or 31 percent. We anticipate that in 2020, for the whole year, the number of complaints uh, would be something like uh, 1,500 or so, uh, it would be down by 492 cases, or 29 percent. Um, so much I, uh, from me regarding the, the trend of um, the figures. What about the FOO-related cases? Chairman, 
I've been making a report regarding the complaints arising from FOO as of um, 4th of um, December. We've received 1,946 cases involving 9,135 people. Uh, 629 are RC or 32 percent involving 684 people. 1,317 NCs or 67 percent involving 8,451 people. For the RC, a minor complaints, uh, 398. Um, the blue one, a uh, neglect of duty, 18%. Um, the uh, 43, uh, impolite, impoliteness, 6.8. Rudeness, 16, 2.5%. Rudeness, offending language, 12, 1.9%. Police procedures, 1, 0.2%. For the serious uh, complaints, uh, 231, or 36.7%. Assault, uh, 111, 17.6%. The pink one, unnecessary use of authority, 108, 17.2%. Red um, threat, 11 1.7%, fabrication of evidence, 1, 0.2%. Uh, let me uh, turn now to the way um, to deal with um, these cases. Uh, six of uh, six, we have uh, contacted uh, 78% or 500 or so people. Um, 179 people chose a full investigation. 147, 21% resulted to withdrawal. 79%, 11% um, chose um, subjudice, 73 or 10.7% um, are not pursuable, 48 7% are undecided about the way in which um, the cases should be dealt with, 10 or 1.5% are uh, resorted to informal resolution. The remaining 145 or 21% have not yet replied. Will we be contacting the other three? Uh, complainants on 0.4 percent. So much for the figures regarding the complaints arising from the uh, Fugitive Offenders Ordinance Amendment. Right, uh, let's um, hear an update about the 52 recommendations. Yes, Chairman, about um, the 52 recommendations. So the five working groups uh, have um, reported the uh, progress to the task force and towards the end of November, the task force has submitted um, the second uh, progress report to the chief executive. Chairman, you might wish um, to refer to the um, written summary for information. I'd like to uh, bring members up to date on the progress. First, uh, at the joint meeting uh, last time, we have reported uh, three recommendations that have been completed. Uh, number one, um, the use of um, water field barrier to minimize uh, the confrontation. Second, um, the mechanism uh, for holding press conference with other departments. And third, um, to the selection of um, two police stations as um, the temporary holding areas. We covered August uh, to October. We have uh, launched 21 um, new measures and initiatives. Uh, involving seven completed recommendations and four recommendations that are undergoing um, 30, 33, 39, 44, 45, and 47. There are four recommendations that we have achieved progress, and they are 29, 46, 50, and 51. For these uh, 21 initiatives, they cover three major areas. The first one is um, the dissem dissemination of information and the increase uh, of transparency. The PPRB has already procured um, a service uh, to, to monitor the public sentiments. We have increased the manpower to set up a new division to, us to facilitate uh, media coverage and uh, live coverage. We've also used uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, IG, Twitter, uh, Weibo, and YouTube as um, part of the facilities. 
We've also produced uh, APIs um, on matters of concern to the public to disseminate information and to, to rectify false reporting. For POEs, uh, we also have uh, the command center of uh, the PPRB in order to enhance communication with um, the uh, police and the public and to uh, live stream um, our action and to increase the transparency and to guard against false allegations. The second one is the improvement of um, the THA. And for uh, THA, so we've increased the manpower, improved um, the procedures. We have the audit trail, a computerized system, and in the THA, we also have the CCTV system to protect the rights and welfare of um, the detainees, and all the activities will be recorded. And third, uh, we will enhance um, the operation. For POEs, the police uh, have updated um, the, 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 the guidelines for risk, risk assessment and to make um, the proper deployment. And for the frontline staff, we also have procured um, the protective gear and uh, offer training and enhance their protection. We've also procured some uh, non-lethal uh, weapons uh, so that we will have a wider selection of choice. The police uh, will be proactively following up on the other recommendations made by um, the IPCC, in particular number nine, uh, whether there should be a code of practice um, to be formulated with the media organizations. The media did say that they, they are not prepared to do so, but the police uh, will be working hard to liaise with the media organizations in order to achieve a consensus so that we will enjoy mutual protection. Uh, for the use of force and the operation, having a regard uh, to the complexity and the controversy of the police, uh, do need to have more time to, to uh, study these issues further. But when we take these matters forward, we would have regard to overseas jurisdictions, analyze on the various models, and assess whether they can be replicated in, in Hong Kong in certain ways. So much for from me. Thank you. You can see that uh, you have already sent us some written report before this meeting. And uh, in these reports, we see that uh, uh, the police and also the security bureau have uh, worked a lot uh, uh, and also reported it to the chief uh, executive. So, uh, and, uh, and also regular updates. I hope that uh, next year we will uh, work on two aspects. Uh, first of all is uh, we will uh, go to, uh, to uh, the sites and then to see the, what has been done. And uh, since you have uh, uh, been doing a lot of improvement, and then uh, so we would really like to uh, uh, to do some work on site to see uh, how it, uh, you deployed and how the arrangements were being done. And uh, I uh, hope that uh, well, you will not. Uh, there will not be the, too much of resistance in us doing that. So the second is about the reports, and uh, you have made a quite uh, a, a significant detailed reports uh, to us. And, and of course, that we also need to follow up on your reports. This is our duty. We hope that uh, in the process of following up, we will have a more comprehensive and more in-depth reports uh, to the public uh, so that uh, the public will be uh, more informed about uh, the actual uh, uh, development. And uh, for sure, we need uh, to uh, report to the Security Bureau because uh, they are the coordinating body. And then uh, they need to know the, the, the work and then, the, and then to what stage work is being undertaken. Any question, Alex? Chair, I have uh, two uh, questions on the improving uh, the uh, facilities uh, of anti-riot uh, teams. Uh, uh, well, just to just mention that some country uh, well, would like to sanction Hong Kong. And then uh, will there be a possibility that, that, that they will not sell does, uh, some of uh, the equipments on anti-riot uh, operation? So I would like to, to see if there is any impact on us. And the second is that uh, given all this uh, development, and uh, okay, 
we actually uh, well, have a more the destination of procurement uh, for this uh, equipment so that uh, we will not put uh, the old eggs in one basket. So before you answer uh, this question, uh, since that uh, uh, Hong Kong is a member of uh, the WTO uh, since 1978, so according to WTO, uh, we need uh, to uh, uh, procure openly and fairly uh, uh, all government uh, materials and then other services. So I think that the government is following this uh, regulations of the WTO. So I would like to hear from the police how you are undertaking this uh, uh, requirement. As you uh, know that uh, for all government procurement, they need actually to, to follow uh, uh, two regulations. One is the WTO uh, requirement uh, on procurement and secondly, we also have uh, uh, procurement uh, regulations by the government, by the Hong Kong government. So uh, just now the question is about uh, uh, the procurement uh, within the, the Hong Kong police force and then the con the showing concerns that may be because uh, of uh, some uh, change in the policy that uh, they will have adverse impact on our procurement uh, 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 action. But uh, until now, I don't think you need actually to worry about it. Uh, and I think that many places have those uh, uh, equipments and facilities. It is not restricted to uh, just uh, one or two countries. And uh, simply put, uh, at this uh, particular moment, uh, we don't see any the difficulties in uh, procuring uh, the anti-riot uh, facilities and equipments that will affect our, our law enforcement operation. So any other questions? If not, then we have uh, gone through all those items for today. Any other AOB? If not, so the decision will end here. Thank you so much uh, for our colleagues from the police. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, the uh, members, for all your questions. Okay. Please be seated. Today, uh, we will uh, focus on our annual report. As uh, you just saw, that uh, we have uh, a meeting with uh, uh, the police and, and uh, we have a uh, briefing on DAC and also the BW. Uh, DC. And then I think that this is a very positive move, uh, but uh, we really need to listen to the opinions from the public and to see the, what uh, for what we should take. And uh, you also heard that, uh, well, I have a few the tasks for next year. First of all, is that to follow up on the 52 recommendations we made in our thematic report to see how they are being uh, implemented and then we will go on site uh, to see how that is being uh, enforced it. and then the, the results and the impact of all this improvement. Uh, we hope that uh, next year we can uh, uh, have a kind of uh, report on that. And uh, when the circumstances allowed, uh, of course, that uh, this is not uh, under our control. Uh, the whole uh, issue is being uh, coordinated by the Security Bureau. So we need to talk uh, to the uh, Bureau to see how the, we can report the, the development. So uh, well, we need to go to the site uh, to see what is being done. And so uh, that will have a, that means a lot of work, and we will of course uh, continue our uh, uh, regular work. 
as you see in the report, uh, during the past year, our complaints, as well as a couple, uh, has been uh, dealing uh, with uh, complaints and then uh, our work in relation to this complaint. Uh, I hope that uh, Secretary General uh, will uh, highlight some of uh, the work uh, uh, being uh, included in this report. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I just want to give uh, the brief on the, a new report. Uh, in the 2019 and 2020, first of all, the, uh, the, in this uh, financial year, the, uh, the reportable uh, uh, cases are 1077, uh, and then uh, there are the 2,209 uh, allegation and then there's a the decrease in the 3% in the reportable complaint. And then uh, there is also a decrease of a total of 10.3%. In terms of uh, the allegations, you can see that uh, on the left, uh, the, the neglect of duty is 45.4%, uh, and uh, misconduct and offensive uh, language. Uh, it's 41.2 percent. They are all categorized as a minor allegation. And then the total is uh, 87 percent. And for serious allegation, include assault and necessary use of authority and fabrication of uh, evidence, stress, etc. The total is 13 percent. And they are similar to our compared to last year. And uh, like uh, the serious allegation is 12 percent. Uh, the allegations we receive uh, uh, for full investigation, uh, the number is 797. Compared uh, to the previous year, uh, has, uh, we see a significant increase. Uh, it's 26.5 percent. Well, the, those who uh, have a full investigation and the results are in uh, the 2019-20, uh, substantiated is uh, seven, uh, 57 cases. Substantiated other than the report is 19 cases. So there are two cases not fully substantiated. Total is 78. And then they are similar uh, uh, compared to last year. 18-19 uh, uh, is uh, 79. So you can see that the, for uh, the, the first three uh, cases, I mean, all these cases uh, uh, after uh, review of uh, IPCC. You can see that uh, uh, of the 78 cases, we all find that uh, that uh, the, the police officers are at fault and then that, that uh, should be penalized. And then uh, all this uh, curious has been raised to, uh, to a couple and then uh, they are, are all classified as more definite finding, and then uh, they have been increased in uh, the, uh, 25 percent. And other than that, uh, after investigation, uh, finding false uh, the 59 cases, then there's a significant increase of uh, almost 80 percent among those uh, false allegations, uh, 46. Uh, allegations that uh, gone through at the court, and then uh, I find it n not uh, substantiated. And for non-pursuable cases and unsubstantiated uh, cases, and then they both uh, on a decrease. Uh, that means that uh, oh wow, are they are they complaining? They do not uh, provide evidence, and then. Uh, that's uh, the decrease of 18.3%, uh, and I think that uh, this is a quite healthy trend. And for unsubstantiated uh, cases, and there's a drop from 299 to 257 of 14% uh, decrease. And of uh, the uh, 78 uh, allegation, and then uh, the police officers need to uh, uh, be penalized by disciplinary action, and then two are subjected to disciplinary review, and then uh, 
uh, 25 uh, have warnings and then uh, 53 advice. The total is 80. And then they are quite similar and with one less. As I just mentioned, uh, well, the complaints uh, does appears to be uh, less. But uh, our queries uh, to couple uh, within the 1920 uh, significantly increased. Um, uh, last year is uh, 77 and now uh, this year is uh, 1,244. There's an increase of 60 percent. And then they could be categorized into, uh, first of all, is a classification of uh, the results. That means that uh, where we have uh, comments or that uh, we do not agree with it. And second is clarification of information and investigation reports. And the third is reasons for exercise police power and then also the, the thoroughness of investigation. That means that uh, we uh, thought that, uh, that we need to follow up on some aspects of the investigation. And uh, on queries, uh, that uh, some queries are on the, the results. Uh, in the 1920, after the, uh, our query to the couple and then uh, the resulting in a change of categorization uh, amounts to the 220 cases. So there's a significant increase of 61 percent from 1819. And uh, well, after our queries, uh, there are 38 cases classified, reclassified as a substantiated two, not fully substantiated 124, uh, no fault. And of course, that uh, when other than uh, whether there uh, the should be disciplinary actions being imposed on the fault find it, etc., uh, we also uh, made suggestions uh, for improvements. Uh, in terms of practices and procedures, and the total suggestions uh, for this year is in six seventeen. These uh, recommendations for uh, on the, the improvements of uh, service quality and to uh, well reduce uh, complaints. In the past, uh, uh, since our assessment in the 20, uh, 2009, uh, we have already done make 150 recommendations, and uh, this year uh, we have made 17. And and that included the skills in the public communication. In many cases, uh, we find that there are minor complaints and then that could be avoided. The reasons for it uh, uh, to uh, take place is because uh, the manner or the language uh, uh, in uh, well, uh, entertaining those uh, complaints, uh, this uh, in uh, communicating with the public has been uh, well problematic. So this is uh, our recommendation. So our suggestion is that, uh, well, uh, maybe that when uh, the public uh, uh, actually is doing some report or uh, in the written communication, then uh, the, the police actually need to keep a good record of all this communication. Sometimes uh, the uh, uh, complainant says that they have already sent a letter of complaint, but uh, the police says that uh, they have no record of that. So I think that uh, this uh, actually uh, need to have an uh, investigation and also an improvement in this aspect to reduce complaints. And secondly, it's about, uh, well, transport and then, uh, well, of course, that in the, those uh, cases, then there are two parties that are in, uh, involved. And uh, some of the complainants says that uh, the allegations raised by the, the police is problematic. So our suggestion is that uh, we really need to have uh, better improve training uh, for the police uh, in terms of uh, police procedure. For instance, uh, like there's a car crash and, and uh, uh, of two cars that, uh, well, the, the fault might not necessarily be uh, the car at the rear. So that uh, we need uh, better training uh, of uh, the police uh, officers uh, that is uh, responsible for all these uh, uh, accidents. And then the second e is about actually keeping uh, records, whether that uh, we, that the duration of uh, the, the recording 
uh, for uh, this to be kept. And, and uh, of course, that, uh, that uh, sometimes the complaints is uh, actually on the lack of evidence and this uh, footages. As you all know that uh, well, uh, we have 120 observers. And uh, the observers' responsibility is that once uh, that uh, we receive uh, the complaints and then uh, when the police, the couple actually meets uh, with the complainants, we, the observers uh, will be present at this meeting. At, uh, There is altogether the, the, the 2,127 2, times that observers are uh, present at this uh, meta. And then the, the, there is an increase from the 1819 and over the past three to uh, four years, our the attendance is over 90%. Uh, for examination of complaint cases, uh, we spend uh, an average of 125 days, uh, up a lot on the previous year. There are a number of reasons. This year, um, the allegation involving a full investigation has increased in number, and we have uh, made more queries. We do need uh, to wait um, for Capo's uh, reply. and. At the beginning, beginning of the year, we were hit by um, COVID, and we also have the social events. And it would take a bit of time to arrange uh, for an interview with um, the complainant, and many a time we have to reschedule the interview. And since um, the inception of IPCC in 2009, we have been paying attention to the trend of um, reportable complaints. This is the 11 years figures. In 2009, we have about uh, 4,000 cases of complaint, 3,800, and it has come down to 1,500 to 1,700 mark. So there are three stages here. The first one is um, the first three years uh, since inception. We've seen uh, three, 4,000 cases, and then uh, down to 2,000. Over the past five years, um, the number has been hovering around uh, 1,500 to 1,700. The number of uh, cases has also been coming down, in particular the number of serious allegations. We have seen a downward trend, and they include assault, um, threat, fabrication of um, evidence, unnecessary use of authority, and so on. It has been trending down. Since its inception in 2009 and 2019 was the, the uh, 10 year anniversary. To tie in with, uh, to mark the, the anniversary, we um, held a seminar uh, with the title Building Confidence and Trust, Role of IPCC in the Evolving Future. All this communication is the key uh, to the um, maintenance of this IPCC system. During the report period, in connection with uh, the complaints arising from the POE uh, or FOO uh, related uh, POE, we have uh, conducted a review, um, a thematic study, and this is unprecedented. We gather all the facts in order to um, um, resolve um, the differences. Uh, so. Um, Facing the future will uh, be the key theme of the IPCC. In the past years, uh, we resorted to various channels, uh, news um, dissemination, news uh, or press conferences, um, to bring the members of the public up to date on our work and to increase transparency. We've also uh, been reaching out uh, to the community and the school campuses. Through our school program over the past two years, we've been to um, secondary schools on 60 occasions. We've reached, reached out to 8,000 teachers and students in these exercises. All these uh, would be instrumental to enhancing public understanding of um, the work of the IPCC. Perhaps I pause here in relation to the um, report. Regarding the FOO, 
related complaints. Uh, each and every complaint is uh, listed as an important complaint. Uh, so the uh, serious complaints committee headed up by uh, Mr. Tony J is uh, responsible for these cases. Now we spent uh, quite a bit of time on uh, each and every case, mainly because uh, for these uh, FOO-related cases, we very much like to have an observer on um, each and every case, and we need to have more time uh, to, to sort out the logistics and, and the arrangement and so on. And also, the SG mentioned the 17 recommendations. They do not form part of the 52 recommendations. Now, these are the uh, recommendations made in relation to um, the ordinary cases and the areas that were identified for further improvement on part of the police, and they are in addition to the 52 recommendations. Uh, Vice Chair, Mr. Tony Jay, will you um, bring us up to date, please? Right, let me uh, briefly bring you up to date um, on the latest um, measures regarding uh, complaints on POEs. Like the Chair said, um, there are many complaints arising from the FOO uh, amendment uh, related uh, exercise. The IPCC has um, noticed that since March this year, the number of complaints has uh, become stable. Basically, each month uh, we see a drop of about uh, 10 cases. As of uh, the 4th of December, we have uh, received uh, complaints relating to FOO, 1,946, 9,135 uh, people lodged the complaint. One third of them, or 629 cases, are reportable complaints involving 684 people. There were 1,111 allegations, 1111, and others, so two, the other two thirds are NCs, uh, notifiable complaints. For RCs, mainly um, the allegations are neglect of duty and misconduct, and they take up 52 percent of um, the uh, 1,111 cases. For the other uh, cases, uh, they are of minor nature, and they take up 70 percent of the total. Like the chairman said uh, just a moment ago, for these uh, serious cases, uh, serious complaints uh, arising from the FOO, we would make arrangement for an observer to attend um, the meetings and also the evidence gathering exercise on part of CAPO. On the 4th of, as of 4th of uh, December, we have uh, 120 observers and we have arranged for 1,000 or so observations. For these uh, serious complaints, uh, the attendance rate is uh, 100 percent. Well, let me uh, take you through um, the examination work um, of um, 600 or so um, RCs. As of uh, 4th of December, CAPO has um, produced an investigation report for 398 cases. Now, for these uh, 398, the IPCC has endorsed 188 cases out of 398, of which 172 involve withdrawal of complaints, 90, non pursuable 73, informal resolution 9. So well over 85% of the, the um, 188 cases are 
either non pursuable uh, or withdrawal cases. 73 non pursuable cases, um, 70 of them uh, was because uh, we couldn't get the cooperation of uh, the complainant. Uh, there were three uh, where we couldn't find the complainant at all. For withdrawal and non pursuable cases, for these two categories, they take up such um, a majority of the cases. In fact, for most of the cases, um, they are of a minor nature, like um, impoliteness, uh, rudeness, um, or shouting at the complainant um, and get, get them to go away and, and um, capturing um, the, um, in some uh, withdrawal cases, the complainant really uh, said that they would like to uh, relate their, their uh, concerns to the high authority with a view to improving the quality of service. Some said that they, they can't be bothered uh, wasting any more time on the complaint. For other cases, after clarifications, um, the um, complaint uh, was triggered by um, sheer misunderstanding. For these uh, non pursuable cases and withdrawal cases, an IPCC award scrutinize um, the, the dialogues uh, record uh, and the evidence to make sure that um, the complainants uh, were not under improper influence. We have to make sure that uh, all the established procedures uh, were followed. We deal with um, these complaints in a serious manner. The complainants uh, lodge the complaints and they do have the obligation to uh, come up with um, the, the uh, comprehensive set range of information, like um, the, the um, contact information, in order that this uh, two-tier complaint system would serve um, the intended purposes and for the cases to be dealt with in an impartial and fair manner with a view to improving the quality of service on the part of the police. We hope that the, the complainant uh, would uh, serve their, their uh, responsibility and uh, make available the relevant information for us to pursue uh, the cases in a fair and just manner. There are 16 that have um, their subject to full investigation, are substantiated to, substantiated uh, without reporting. Now, there are some that are not reported, but we've seen some uh, something improper. There is one unsubstantiated four. There are 12 uh, that, that um, are found to be without any fault. Uh, there are 19 cases. Uh, CAPO has submitted 210 cases to the IPCC, and we are scrutinizing uh, these. The IPCC will be really rigorous in our scrutiny, and there are some cases we need to um, make clarifications. As of now, we have um, made uh, 290 queries involving 730 cases with um, CAPO, and we sought clarification on the information, and we identified, tried to ident identify the complainant and sought more evidence and so on. As the chairman said uh, just a few moments ago, we have to make sure that I mean, this would um, incur more time uh, spent on, on the processing of the complaints. And this is to make sure uh, that um, the, the complaints will be dealt with uh, in a more efficient manner. So much, I have to say, for the time being. Thanks very much, um, Vice Chairman Tony J. Going forward in the coming year, we would um, process um, the existing uh, outstanding cases. We try to clear the backlog. And for 74 cases um, that will be um, destined for the court, now, this is outside of autonomy. Uh, we don't know when uh, the cases will be listed. And we cannot deal with them until after the, the, the um, court has um, got them out of the way. We cannot deal with um, these 74 cases. For, for other cases that are not destined for the court, we will try to clear the backlog. Uh, the second area is that we hope that for the 17 uh, recommendations and the uh, 52 recommendations, we will proactively follow 
them up. We will conduct site visits. I, I hope that uh, we will find a, a proper opportunity uh, to um, make a report. As to how soon we can get this done, I'm not sure because um, I have to um, consult um, Secretary Lee on the progress. We were told that he has already submitted the second report to the chief executive. Now, what instructions will be handed down by the chief executive? We're not privy to this, and we will have to follow up on this uh, before we can uh, conduct a safe visit uh, to see for ourselves. The third area of work is that we will be uh, doing outreach work. We'll do more, more of the same next year, last year. I mean, this year we haven't, we haven't done quite enough. Uh, COVID permitting, we'll do more outreach work. Uh, Clement is uh, in charge of this area of work. Uh, call upon Clement, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. As the Chair mentioned, that the two-tier system is uh, very important uh, for the public to uh, know uh, the responsibility of uh, CAPO and also IPCC. And uh, this uh, is very important for us to, to uh, effectively carry out our duties. And then over the past 11 years uh, that we have been doing this outreach work for people to know us more, and then, as you all know, that uh, well, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, our outreach work has been affected, but uh, it, it will not disappear, and, and uh, it uh, will remain as one of our main uh, in our agenda. And uh, the society at large, uh, including pub, the, uh, schools and the commercial entities, and then also the, the, the civil society. Uh, we will uh, try every means uh, to find uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, inform the public about our roles and responsibility. And if uh, the public want to make complaints about the police, and then uh, uh, we will also inform them about the procedure and also the role of IPCC. As the two chairs uh, mentioned, during the FRO and, and also other POEs, and 100% uh, 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 of the cases are uh, being uh, observed uh, by the IPCC, uh, including those interviews uh, when the, the complainants and the police are present, etc. So, in the future. We will continue uh, this work and then also to continue uh, to uh, promote the awareness and understanding of uh, the complaint mechanism and the work of this two-tier system. And there will also be planned uh, to expand uh, the depth and also the width, uh, other, that means other than school and also NGOs, uh, we have plans uh, to cover also the media and other platforms uh, in terms of our outreach work. Sorry. Uh, So I'm uh, from so about uh, 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 the High Court's uh, verdict, and, and uh, that is already a month. And then at that time, uh, you said uh, that uh, we need actually to study the, the verdict, and then uh, uh, action, actions will be uh, taken. And uh, well, uh, on that verdict, that uh, that uh, you have uh, no uh, role and responsibility in. This uh, investigation, and then uh, also about uh, the, the, the general secretary's comment uh, on the annual report. 
that uh, about the disciplinary action, uh, there are the f 45 cases uh, need uh, actually the, to uh, be dealt with uh, in accordance to your query, and there is a 61 percent increase in the reclassification of allegation, and uh, so uh, these two categories um, actually uh, uh, have been improved after your queries and uh, deliberation. So uh, can we draw the conclusion that uh, there is a kind of uh, impartiality and fairness in uh, this situation? And the other is about FOO cases. There are uh, 16 cases, but two months ago, the, at that time, the report says there's only six. So the, with the lapse of uh, two months, and then you have made a progress of 10 cases. Well, can we say they're too slow, the progress? And then the four the, the substantiated but then reported cases. Can you uh, elaborate on that? So uh, I will. Uh, yes, we have uh, consider taken into consideration the verdict of the High Court, and then uh, so. Uh, opinions from our the legal advice. Uh, the result is that, first of all, the verdict and uh, that did not uh, does not affect our work because uh, actually that, that that does not have any impact on the uh, the provision on IPCC. So we have to uh, continue our work according to, to the IPCC ordinance. Uh, we have already mentioned that, and then now it's being proven uh, by our legal advice. And then uh, all our members are informed about the, the situation. So uh, we will uh, continue uh, with our work in accordance to the item eight of uh, the provision uh, uh, regu uh, on IPCC. And then uh, we don't have any suggestion on improvement because uh, the legal advice said that according to item eight, uh, well, uh, well, uh, that does not allow us to make recommendations. They only allow us uh, to uh, do investigation and queries. So, so the 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 GOD and then the, the police is already making appeal. I at least is already making appeal. I, I, uh, I do not I, I do not know the progress. And I haven't talked with uh, the chief executive, uh, although that uh, I met her last week uh, is uh, on the, that uh, annual meeting of uh, Asian uh, International Law uh, Forum. Uh, I don't know what is her next step, uh, but I just uh, thought and I uh, believe that uh, she will wait until uh, there's a result uh, of, uh, from, uh, with the appeal. And then um, um, maybe it will uh, go to the final court of appeal. And uh, so we, we need to wait a little bit. You can see that uh, in the 10th anniversary report, uh, we uh, uh, have uh, been working over a net that decade. And then maybe the, we need to uh, listen to uh, the society to see whether that we have a different role. And then uh, I'm open for that. And then uh, we cannot have an opinion. We cannot have an opinion. We uh, need to follow uh, the uh, regulation, the ordinance. Well, to your question is that there are two th uh, issues. One is that uh, there is a hundred and one thousand. Uh, 144 case, 144 cases. There's an 1,244, and then uh, there is an increase of 60.1 uh, percent. And then uh, for uh, uh, the uh, investigation results, and there is also a significant increase in the total. So uh, that I think that this, this fully reflects our the duty, and that is our the roles and responsibility. And couple receive the complaints, and they will do investigation. They have a result, but this is not final, and uh, we have IPCC. So that we will look at each one of these cases, these complaints, and look at uh, the investigation report, whether it is uh, comprehensive, whether that, that they uh, uh, have enough uh, uh, information and analysis, whether it is in, it's fair and impartial, and whether there are the places that uh, need uh, uh, 
to be follow up. So the, with the, the 1,404 and 878, and then they are of various uh, uh, nature. And then, uh, but uh, both uh, uh, figure uh, reflect that uh, we have done our work. And then uh, we have made queries, and we uh, need a uh, uh, couple to, uh, to uh, uh, respond to our queries. And uh, the substantiator, substantiator, other than reporter, not fully substantiated. These three categories, these three allegations, concerned uh, officials are at fault to different degrees. 78 in total, and uh, 45 uh, are. Uh, have uh, been uh, were followed by the queries from IPCC to couple. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, a different opinion, maybe, and then uh, then that is the reason why we need to have a two-tier system. The first tier is uh, by the, the police force. The, that uh, the advantage is that they are more efficient. They have more knowledge about uh, the work of uh, the police. Uh, but uh, well, their point of view might be different. Well, the IBCC is composed of uh, different professions. There is the legal, uh, the lawyer, engineer, and then uh, also doctors, etc. We have we have different opinions, and, and therefore we uh, make queries to couple. And then uh, well, we have we looking at the, the case uh, from different perspective and point of view, and uh, we. We don't have a position. We don't have a fixed position. And through our queries, and then if we finally define substantiated, and then uh, well, there are uh, also cases that uh, that there's uh, no fault uh, as a kind of uh, actual result. But uh, so so. So we are just following the, the, the regulations and provision. These two figures vary years from year, and then they differ because of the different complaints we receive. But this, the both figures reflect our roles and responsibility. And as the Secretary General mentioned, uh, well, that, uh, that is actually the scope of our work. And then the most of the work are done by the Secretariat of IPCC. But after the Secretariat, and then for each, uh, every, uh, and every one of uh, the, the cases, and then, uh, well, for those uh, uh, about uh, the FOO, that it will, uh, will be uh, the, under the, the jurisdiction of uh, uh, Mr. Chair. And then they might hold a different perspective from the police. And then, uh, of course, that they also come from different professions, and they will also affect their judgment. And after the going through uh, the cases, and then they will are tabled for the, the, the full meeting and then to endorse. And then finally, it will come to me. So every case uh, will uh, go through the 26 members and then, uh, and then finally approved by me. So that uh, I think that this is all a matter of uh, a perspective and different points of view. And uh, for sure, I am not on the operational level. I am actually actually seeing it uh, as the uh, the last destination. But uh, well, from time to time, I will talk with the commissioner and communicate with the commissioner, and also the, with uh, uh, the entire the management uh, and the, the uh, deputy commissioners, and then uh, if. I found that if actually that they find them at fault, they would uh, well take a, uh, appropriate actions according to, to uh, the regulation. This is uh, the response I got from them. So uh, we will uh, carry our duties, and then uh, this uh, two-tiered uh, monitoring system until today is effective and. And service intention, as uh, the Secretary General says, that in the 2019, 20 compared to 1819, that uh, it takes a longer time to, to uh, uh, handle the, the complaints. But as uh, the chair mentioned, uh, we uh, there are there is always space for improvement. 
and uh, because of uh, the future to uh, low, uh, bills revision, we hope that uh, we can clear uh, all these uh, complaints, uh, uh, except uh, those have been taken to court, and that is not up to, uh, under our uh, control. We hope that uh, we want to make improvement uh, well step by step, and that can always be done. And then, uh, well, another issue. Uh, uh, is about uh, uh, substantiated but unreported cases, and, and uh, this is a uh, neglect of duty. Uh, involve a neglect of duty, and then according to the guidelines, uh, the case uh, involve uh, are not uh, recording in detail some of the, the happenings. The complaint and said that the testimony and uh, the undersigning of the testimony is not being done. Uh, but uh, well, according to the guideline, that uh, that uh, well, uh, the police officer need actually to ask uh, the reason, also to actually to record the reason of not undersigning the testimony. So that I uh, we think that that is uh, well substantiated. Also on the SOTR cases, and was it the case that you spotted them uh, in court, or, or was it because of other reasons? Now these um, SOTR cases, the complainant uh, was involved in um, illegal unauthorized assembly, and he was um, arrested and taken to his home for a home search. And he lodged a complaint that um, he was um, forced to um, to put on a hood after the investigation. Um, the Police officer said that he has secured um, his consent, so he said his words um, against the police um, words. In terms of hood, um, the consent uh, has to be secured. Um, whether he gives the consent or not will have to be recorded. The police officer said that he has secured his consent, but the logbook didn't show that, so there was um, a Neglect of duty, so there was no complaint, and, and there's a case of a substantiated other than reported. RTHK. The number of complaints uh, to Capo has been decreasing. Is it the case that the police have been doing a good job, or is it because the that there is a lack of confidence in Capo. You said that um, some of them um, withdraw the cases because they couldn't be bothered uh, wasting time on the cases. That they, they didn't want to waste time pursuing the cases. Is um, this category increasing? If the, it is increasing, uh, does it show that um, the confidence in, in Capo uh, has been um, shaken? I've shown this. Um, Complaint figures for the past 11 years since our reception, uh, since our inception, that the number has been decreasing from 3,000, 4,000 to 1,500 to 1,700 in recent years. We have been um, analyzing the situation. There are two schools of thought. Uh, first, uh, there has been improvement in the quality of service. The other said that there is a lack of confidence in the complaint system, and that's why they can't be bothered. But over the past 11 years. The IPCC at different levels, um, through our scrutiny, uh, we have uh, made 150 recommendations. And CAPO has been doing quite a lot of work. A lot of committees have been set up to minimize uh, complaints and to uh, follow up on our com uh, recommendations. Our view is that this is uh, really positive. The level of service has uh, increased, uh, and hence um, the number of complaints um, dropping. 
you, you said that there is a lack of confidence. I can tell you that uh, we have uh, 1,900 cases in the um, PO, um, social event. 1,200 um, are a non foreseeable um, a, a non um, um, reportable cases and 600 reportable cases. And people don't have the confidence; they can't be bothered making the complaints. We hope that. Um, people have confidence in our systems. We will do more to instill confidence. But from the figures, um, the social events happened uh, last year. But over the past 10 years, um, the decade has been showing a downward trend, and that includes um, the serious allegations. Our view is that um, the surface has been leveling up. And hence the lower figures. If uh, we break new high every single year, it shows that the work undertaken by the IPCC and CAPO um, are not uh, really up to scratch. Two questions to follow up on the previous ones. So you said that uh, 45 out of the 78 investigation results uh, were reclassified or re uh, registered after you raised queries with CAPO. So would you say that it is it's actually more than half, 45 out of 78. So would you say that CAPO is not doing a good enough job because more than half of these cases are only substantiated after you stepped in? And secondly, um, to follow up on the previous question, you said that people have not lost confidence um, in the police complaint mechanism because of the, um, the number of complaints made during the past year. Could you explain a little bit more on that? Thank you. Let me, let me do that first. I mean, the, the detailed work, of course, is done by the Secretariat. Uh, but as far as these complaints are concerned, as I've explained to, to just now, uh, the Secretariat engages with uh, CAPO, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, because they come from a different background, they look at things a bit differently. So therefore, they, they do make queries. So we don't just accept anything that uh, the CAPO uh, says. Uh, but uh, we, we don't, as, as the Secretary General says, we, we don't see that CAPO itself is, is actually trying to, uh, 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 to help their own people or try and, try and cover up for their own people. I don't think so. I think they look at things a bit differently. And we, we uh, the Secretariat, with people coming from different backgrounds, I mean, there's, uh, there's nobody who's come from the police in the, in the Secretariat, for example. Uh, except for a very long time ago, Daniel, the Deputy uh, Secretary uh, General, uh, was, I think, 15, 16 years ago, a member of the police force. Since then, he's joined the ICAC and came to us eight years ago. So uh, really, they're very, very far away from the current uh, uh, police force. So they do look at things somewhat differently. Uh, we, we, we think that the police force uh, does things in good faith. Uh, although, uh, uh, again, uh, we, we look at things differently. Now, after the, the changes of substantiation sometimes are brought about uh, by not only the Secretariat, but actually by the committees, which actually look at the, the, the work product of the uh, Secretariat. Uh, and in addition to that, of course, after the committees have actually done their work, uh, each case is sent to the 26 members uh, of the council, each of us then look at these cases, and uh, we make our own comment on that. And sometimes, in fact, uh, one or two of us might disagree. Then it goes back to the committee, it goes back to the secretariat, and then it goes back to the police. That, and a, a discussion then takes place, and uh, the result of that discussion uh, is a change of classification. So uh, it's um, uh, it's really a two-way process, and we, we don't see that uh, really. Uh, the police force capo uh, uh, is, is somehow covering, covering up. Uh, they, they, they try to do an honest job, we think, uh, but we do sometimes uh, see things differently. That's, that's the whole point of having a two-tier system, of course. Uh, and I've also explained to your colleagues that uh, uh, I've spoken uh, quite often to the commissioner, that's Mr. Tang, and uh, the deputy commissioner, Mr. Kwok, and uh, the senior assistant commissioner, Ms. Lam. And, uh, they, they all say to me that, that obviously uh, their job is to ensure that uh, all police officers follow the rules. And if they don't follow the rules, 
then they will ensure uh, that uh, the appropriate uh, kind of uh, uh, advice, punishment, disciplinary action uh, will be taken, depending, of course, on each case. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'd like to, to supplement. Um, well, I have said that uh, the figure, 45 out of 78 uh, last year, did reflect the role and functions of uh, IBCC as an oversight body. And we may have under 2D system, we have different roles, and we may have different viewpoints. And that, that, that's the true value of IPCC. But frankly, personally, if you ask me, um, 45 out of 78, uh, 78 is a bit, the figure is quite, quite, quite big. That means that uh, internally, internally, we have, we have communication with the uh, cable. Uh, on up the conclusion of each cases, we will, we will uh, reflect, explain our rationale to them. And through this, we hope to narrow down the difference in viewpoints between, between IBCC and cable. That there's no point that we, we always have different viewpoints. Something we may have uh, common viewpoints. So, so. One thing I might add, of course, if, if in the end the discussion results in a uh, a standoff, in other words, uh, results in each party holding to their own views, then under the ICP, IPCC ordinance, we can elevate that uh, 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 the discussion or the impasse uh, to the chief executive, and the chief executive then will have to decide. We've never had to do this so far, but it is in the law. <laughs> First of all, I would like to ask uh, the Secretary General. You said that uh, in the FOO there are the over 1,000, uh, actually the, the 700 uh, well, cases, and then that they as a historic high the, uh, on the increase. You said that people have trust, so that's why they make the complaints. And then the, the situation is quite controversial, so that's why we also just uh, see those increase. And, and uh, can the chair also just shed light on the, on the public and also on the two-tiered system uh, that uh, the people uh, do not have trust on that? And then would you make recommendation to the, the CE so that you can expand your scope uh, of investigation? And the second is uh, for Mr. Leung. And then the, uh, May this year, the government uh, has uh, re released a press release saying that uh, you will extend uh, for another year, uh, uh, very unlike uh, the normal extension for two years. So the, uh, what is the reason uh, because the behind that? And, and uh, how do you see the development of IPCC? Uh, first of all, it's because of my health situation. Uh, uh, I'm already 75 years old next year. I think that, uh, that the government should uh, uh, get the younger people actually to uh, serve uh, this position. And I, I should retire. Secondly, it, uh, about IPCC, whether the, the, uh, the pe people have trust on IPCC, I think that we also need to, to uh, well, uh, study this. I don't know. Uh, I think that we really need to conduct uh, some uh, well, very progressive uh, study uh, to find out the answer. Some people told me that uh, that the people have trust on IPCC, uh, whether that this comment actually represents the majority. I don't know. I, I'd, uh, I don't know the, how we can have a conclusion uh, whether that the public have trust on IPCC or not. That question needed to be studied further. And then uh, at this uh, stage, I don't have an answer. Uh, what I could say is that that IPCC worked in accordance to uh, uh, the, the uh, regulation. Uh, you asked me about uh, my comments on the verdict, and uh, after that, uh, we also just uh, sought uh, advice from our legal uh, representative. They said that uh, well, we. Uh, need to uh, work in accordance to item 8 of uh, the, uh, the legislation. So the, this is a society that is ruled by law, then so we need uh, to uh, abide by the related regulations. 
chair on whether that uh, we have confidence or trust. I think that this is very important uh, when we introduce uh, our work last year and also to, on to the theme uh, of uh, on our, our 10th anniversary. And uh, whether the public have trust uh, on the IPCC and CAPO, I think this uh, actually has a lot of weight on the work of IPCC and the CAPO uh, and this uh, two-tier system. I'm open to this. There are two, uh, well, uh, attitude or two opinions uh, on this issue. And uh, whether that uh, we have confidence, uh, our members, We need to, uh, to take uh, uh, well uh, independent or uh, objective uh, surveys uh, in appropriate time. I personally uh, think that this is very positive, uh, according to, to uh, the, the experience over the past decade, and a lot of work has been done. And uh, uh, the figures I've quoted. Uh, well, it's uh, under uh, uh, our assessment. Trust and confidence. We look at uh, the society over the past years. Uh, when we look at the, the, the complaints, we understand that uh, the, a significant proportion of the public did not uh, have a full understanding of uh, the work of the police. Uh, for instance, uh, in FOO, that, uh, that some uh, well, uh, members of the public, they receive uh, some messages uh, from, uh, the, uh, from uh, the police saying that uh, there is uh, a, a, a gatherings and uh, processions that uh, is being undertaken uh, with uh, uh, no letter of uh, objections uh, from the police. And so uh, I think that, that this has been dealt with uh, in the, our recommendations. And then uh, our recommendation says that uh, the police need to take prompt actions to inform the public uh, to make a necessary preparation if there is large uh, uh, POEs. And then there are complaints also. Uh, like uh, the three uh, well, strikes, and there are a lot of happenings uh, during that period of time, and then the police have uh, well, set up some roadblocks, and then and uh, there is uh, these actions and operations are very much needed, and then uh, for some stop and search. And then uh, people find that very inconvenient, so they make complaints to the couple. And there are complaints also, the, uh, well, uh, in on the, 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 the 21st of July, and then when people made uh, well reports through 999, and all this uh, well uh, 999 calls has been recorded, and then uh, well there are complaints on the impoliteness. Uh, of the police officers uh, uh, that is uh, in responsible. And then, uh, but I think that all these are just impression by the public. And then the, that uh, all these complaints originate from uh, mistrust or, uh, of the police uh, by the public. I think that when time comes and then uh, we need to uh, well conduct an uh, independent investigation on the confidence and trust of the public on the police. Uh, questions for the, Mr. Jed from Apple Daily about uh, the, the digital devices. You have uh, raised a question about uh, the assurance of uh, usage of uh, these footages uh, uh, that they are being impartially and, and uh, also the, and uh, fairly used, and they haven't actually directly respond to that, and then you haven't follow up uh, on the, the, uh, the response. Will IPCC uh, follow up on the, uh, whether that, that, that these footages are being used fairly and impartially? Well, uh, I think that our role and duty is uh, to identify uh, circumstances that uh, needs follow up. Well, why I uh, did not follow up on that particular answer is because uh, the answer is that they they have a straight 
uh, guidelines in assuring that uh, they would be used fairly and, and impartially. And then uh, they will also uh, report to us. And then, uh, and then we will look at that actually as a check and balance. So I will not make a judgment uh, about, uh, uh, to, uh, immaturely. And then, uh, so anyway, I, I think that we have follow up. And I don't know whether I answer your question or not. What I would like to add is that for FOO, uh, well, it's really unpre unpre unprecedented, and then uh, well, the, the uh, POE resulted also outnumber uh, previous uh, happenings, and uh, just because of that, uh, we uh, have made uh, actually an a audit report, and um, I think that this is also a way uh, forward. That is uh, actually the, to the make recommendations and also opportunities uh, the, to uh, improve. And then the, this is this direction we have taken. And personally speaking, uh, the system after a decade uh, might need to be reviewed. And but I personally is open to that. But before all, we have a better uh, system. And then as a member of IPCC, and, and uh, I think that uh, we have already worked very hard and then uh, to uh, live up to, to our duty in accordance to uh, the related uh, legislation. You listen to my question, right? Uh, there's not only one camera. There are a few cameras uh, well, uh, in action. And so that uh, when the case was uh, is the, brought to uh, the court, then the, the judge might ask, uh, oh, well, where are the other footages? And so uh, I think the question is uh, how to deal uh, with it uh, impartially and fairly. Uh, I think it's a very serious matter. And then uh, I think both the, the, the DOJ and also I think that uh, the court will uh, look into this issue. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.